Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day. And today's founder, if I'm pronouncing it right, is Gustavus Cunningham. And to help us talk about Gustavus Cunningham, we have a special guest, Michael Troy of the American Revolution Podcast. Michael, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Jason. Glad to be here. And real quick, for those of you watching, if you've been to this channel, you've probably heard me talk about the American Revolution podcast. It is one of my favorite ways to consume the American Revolution. And after, what, three and a half years, Michael Troy is going chronologically through the American Revolution. And you've recently just pretty much gone through Saratoga, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we're a little past Saratoga, just finishing up the um, occupation of Philadelphia now. So, yeah, end of 1777, basically. Amazing. So you decided to come talk to us. When I asked you what founder you'd like to talk about, you brought up Gustavus Cunningham, which is a difficult name to pronounce. Uh, what was Gustavus, where was he from, and what was he up to when the American Revolution started? Well, Gustavus was born in Ireland, uh, Donegal, actually. Um, came from a fairly good family, but even for decent families in, in Ireland, there was not a lot of opportunity. He had a cousin who was running a mercantile business in Philadelphia. So as a relatively young teenager, he crossed the Atlantic to Philadelphia and started working for his cousin uh, and very quickly became a merchant seaman, loved uh, life at sea, and uh, very quickly was captaining his own ships. This was in the uh, 1760s, about 10 years before the war began. So by the time the revolution began, he was the captain of a merchant ship and a pretty successful Philadelphia um, sea captain. Excellent. So the war breaks out, and since we're talking about him, I'm assuming Gustavus decided to become a patriot. Uh, and what role did he play in the revolution itself, if any? He did. Well, his first um, significant act on behalf of the revolution was to sail a ship uh, to Europe in 1775 in search of gunpowder. Uh, the colonists, the, the Continental Army, was in desperate need of gunpowder. And um, he sailed his ship, the uh, Charming Peggy, uh, to um, France and the Netherlands in search of gunpowder. And um, managed to get his ship seized and uh, found himself stuck in Europe for almost a year without anything to do. Um, where was his know, the... I'm sorry, sorry where ahead. was his ship seized? Was he in France at that point? He was um, actually in the Netherlands at the time. He, the, the British had spies everywhere, and they were, of course, desperately looking for troublesome Americans who were out trying to buy powder and guns and all sorts of other uh, implements of war. Uh, so they, they caught him in the Netherlands and the Dutch as well as the French and pretty much everybody else had treaties with France saying, uh, we're not going to sell armaments to people who are at war with France and, uh, or with, with Britain. Um, so the Netherlands was obliged by its treaty to seize the vessel. Uh, he ended up having it stuck in port for a long time. And, uh, Basically, he got robbed. Some people broke into his ship, stole all the contents of it. Uh, he ended up trying to sell the ship to some Dutch officials. Uh, they ended up saying, yeah, okay, thanks for the ship, but they never quite got around to paying him for it. So he pretty much lost everything. Uh, this was early 1776 by this time. So, uh, so he hung around in Europe for a while and eventually figured out that the um, American commissioners were in Paris, so he went to go pay them a visit um, to see if they could help him with getting a new ship and a new crew and put him to use. So uh, when he went there, I, the commissioners, I'm assuming you mean Benjamin Franklin, Silas Dean, and Arthur Lee, uh, were, they, were they helpful for him? They were. Uh, it took... Uh, almost a year for him to actually get a new ship and to get everything he needed, but they did help him get a ship. And Benjamin Franklin actually gave him a, a commission as an officer in the a captain in the Continental Navy. So, with that, he was all ready to 
get back out there and uh, do some more damage. And he, he spent several months sailing around the the waters off of England, the, the English Channel, the Irish Sea, that area, capturing quite a few prize ships, and he brought them back to Dunkirk in France. Interesting. Uh, now this... Yeah, you know, I yeah, know, uh, you know, I've, I knew that the uh, commissioners in France were giving out officer uh, uh, commissions to the French people and other officers who went over to fight in the Continental Army, but I didn't realize they were giving out commissions to Continental Navy officers, for lack of a better term. That's really interesting. So what does Gustavus Cunningham do uh, after he leaves Paris? He gets the ship and he takes off. What does he do from there? He, uh, the ship is named the Surprise, and he uh, essentially does just that. He goes out and surprises <laughs> British shipping, uh, seizing vessels and uh, capturing them as prizes and bringing them back to um, France to be sold as prizes. Uh, now, this was in um, the summer of 1777, basically, and uh, France had not yet gone to war with Britain. So he brings all these prize ships back to France, to Dunkirk specifically, and the British ambassador in France is going apoplectic. He says, hey, France, you've got this pirate who's capturing British vessels and bringing them back to your ports, and by our treaty, uh, that can't happen. Uh, France was kind of in a difficult position at this point. They they wanted to support the American cause, but they also weren't ready to go to war with Britain. They were still rebuilding their army and navy, and they did not want to prematurely enter the war before they were really ready to do so. So when the British ambassador kept saying, hey, you know, this, these are criminal acts, you're not prosecuting them, this is an act of war against our country, you need to do something about it. So Eventually, the French had to do something about it, and they ended up seizing uh, Cunningham and his ships and returning the prizes to their British owners, and they threw Cunningham in jail. In, um, oh, he went to jail in France. He went to jail in France. He was only there for a short time. They were basically waiting for the everything to blow over, and then they let him out again because, you know, they again, supported them. They, they, it was all kind of a wink and a nod. Oh, we're shocked, shocked that there's a pirate in our uh, country. We'll deal with it. Yeah, right. Please um, don't go to war with us. We definitely don't want to start a war with you very soon. <laughs> right. So basically, they, they were perfectly happy to tweak the British as much as they could, just, just short of having them actually go to war. So they kind of knew when to push the buttons and then when to pull it back a little bit. And so they kept playing that game for almost a year. Um, not just with Cunningham, but with a whole bunch of others. Lambert Wicks was another uh, American sea captain over there at the time. I was going to, um, I was going to say this. The whole scenario reminded me very specifically of Lambert Wicks while you were uh, yeah. talking about it. Yeah, yeah they went so, through, he went through essentially the the same. I don't think he went to prison at all, but he went through essentially the same rigmarole, for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th this was happening all the time, and the British were, they, they knew everything that was going on. The, the British actually had a spy, uh, Ben Franklin's personal secretary was a British spy, so uh, Edward yes, Bancroft. Bancroft, yeah. So, yeah, and there were others, Paul Wentworth, and uh, pretty much the British often knew, well, they did know pretty much everything that was going on with the American delegation before anyone in Philadelphia knew about it. Um, you know, they just had a direct uh, path right to, you know, what was happening. So, oh, right. Anytime an uh, American captain was getting ready to set sail, the British knew they were ready for it. And they were waiting to catch the ship. Um, so there was a lot of that in that first year. The Americans were really learning how to, <laughs> how to wage war and keep secrets. Yeah, the um, baby steps. <laughs> yeah. So what happens to Gustav? Uh, his name troubles me. Gustavus Cunningham, what happens to him uh, after he's out of prison? Does he stick around Europe? Does he take back to the seas? Does he come back to the United States? Yeah, he gets another ship. Uh, he gets the revenge and uh, goes out on another massive tour. This time he's at sea for uh, 
well over a year, maybe almost two years, uh, captures a whole bunch of prizes in and around Britain, even goes over to the West Indies for a while and catches a bunch of ships there. I think he, over the course of the two years, he captures about 60 prizes. Um, insurance rates for British merchant ships go up by about 10%, just as a result of what he's been doing. Uh, um, many British merchants don't want to even send their goods on British ships anymore they're looking for french and dutch ships to carry their goods just so that they can get them where they need to go without <laughs> these pirates uh attacking them so he really has a big impact on british trade and um the ability of, of britain to conduct business make money which is hitting the Amer hitting the british where they live you know you, you're, you're hitting their profits um right, so yeah he, he Sim, I was going to say similar to both John Paul Jones and uh, uh, Wicks, if I'm not mistaken. Just kind of yeah, he's doing the, this about the same the time that the Wicks is doing it. John Paul people. Jones comes in a little later. Right. Um, yeah. but Takes all the credit. The early, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in the early few years of the war, John Paul Jones is really not doing much of anything. He's uh, he, he wasn't even a captain at the, at the beginning of the war. He was lieutenant on his first ship and... Uh, quickly moves up to captain but he, he sticks around the the, uh, the american continent for for the first couple of years and he he actually has a great deal of trouble getting a ship um jones uh spends i think over a year year and a half in america just sitting around waiting for a new ship to be given to him and then he ends up finally having to catch a ride on somebody else's ship over to europe before um they promise to have a ship ready for him there, and he ends up cooling his heels there for quite a while too. Uh, but eventually, John Paul Jones does get a ship, and he and Gustavus Cunningham work together for a time. Uh, they they actually went out together looking for uh, enemy prizes to capture. That's so, amazing, like you know, a, a little them. like a mini fleet almost. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Hard to call two ships a fleet, but still very cool. Yeah. And by and large, these guys were not looking to take on the British Navy. They were looking to capture British merchant ships and avoid the British Navy at all costs. Right. Uh, but the British, of course, were reacting to all of this and trying to uh, prevent uh, what they saw as piracy on the high seas. Right. And uh, eventually they do capture um, Cunningham. Um, and he is brought to Britain... Um, as a pirate and is tried and imprisoned and is threatened with hanging. Uh, the Americans um, tell British officials that if Gustavus is hanged, that they're going to hang uh, six British prisoners in America in retaliation. So that probably is what saved his life. They just let him languish in prison. Um, pretty miserable existence he loses over 60 pounds while he's in prison um he gets very sick um but he comes up with a good exercise regimen he decides that uh, digging a tunnel under the prison wall is a good way to exercise every day so after a few weeks he has a tunnel and he and a bunch of other inmates escape and steal a ship and zip back to france so That's once again, he's amazing. on the loose. Yeah. I don't know how um, this story has eluded me all these years. That's a, that's fascinating. Do you know? Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's amazing. Do, do you know uh, what kind of, sh was it a privately owned ship or was it a, a Navy ship? Do you happen to know? It's, I know that's a very specific the, question. I, I don't know if he actually hijacked a ship or whether he was able to just get aboard a ship and, and, and sneak away to tell you the truth. Very interesting. Um, so where, where do they but, go with this commandeered yeah. ship? Uh, he goes back to France okay. and um, actually gets another ship. Um, oh, ship becomes number captain of, of, four. Or yeah, this, technically yeah, this five. Yeah, is the fourth ship. Do you count the ship fourth he ship. stole? Because that would be five if I'm counting right. Is it? I don't know. He's well, got he, the he charming the... Peggy and then the... Um, and the surprise, surprise and then the, the revenge. revenge and then he and stole then, the one and then he goes to france yeah that's unbelievable 
So, so what does he yeah, do you... with this ship? Uh, he does go on another bit of a rampage, but eventually heads back to Philadelphia. Okay. And um, kind of expects to be come back as a conquering hero. He's you know done all this great work on on behalf of the American cause and captured all these ships and really disrupted British commerce and all that. And uh, he gets back to Philadelphia and reports to the Continental Congress, and they say, "Yeah, that's great." Uh, could you please show us your captain's papers? And he doesn't have them because when the French officials imprisoned him way back in 1776, they never gave him his papers back. Oh. So Congress essentially says, well, we have no evidence that you're a Navy captain. Uh, so we're taking away that your Navy ship and we're giving it to somebody else who really is a captain who has his papers and you know you're pretty much stuck uh so again he ends up cooling his heels for a while very interesting but eventually he does get another ship yeah oh because word word gets back i mean you know franklin and the officials in france are right. saying yeah this guy is the real deal he's done all these amazing things you guys just can't just treat him like this yeah what are you um, doing come on <laughs> So he gets ship number so six. So by this time, it's... We're on ship six. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I think so. What does he and, do with this um, piece? He goes out on another rampage, uh, <clears throat> heads back to the waters around Britain, and he manages to get himself captured by the British again. Great. So he is sent to prison in 1780. Um spends uh, maybe not quite a year in prison uh this time he's treated a little bit better but uh, he's not treated as as a criminal as much as he is a prisoner of war um but still he's in prison it's not like they give him parole or anything this guy's a flight risk they know that okay. um so he's eventually exchanged uh for some captured uh, british prisoners in 1781 and at that point, he returns to America and he decides to hang it up for the rest of the war. Well, you know, the war is pretty much over at that point. This is like just before Yorktown that he gets back to America. Right. So, um, yeah, he's in he's in Philadelphia after that. Um, so do we one know what... reason oh, we probably don't know a lot about Cunningham is that um, he was not considered a Navy captain captain the, the the continental congress never recognized his status as a captain of the navy and this actually caused him a lot of problems after the war because he was applying for veterans benefits and to receive a captain's share of all the prizes that he caught and congress said yeah gotta see that paper and he could never come up with it so he never got any veterans benefits he never got any recognition and he went back to becoming a merchant sea captain after the war and had a reasonably good life um, but was never recognized at the time for his um, for what he had done for for the American cause now uh, this story actually ends in um, the early 20th century um, somebody buys a bunch of uh, French antiques and they find in the back of a picture frame Gustavus Cunningham's commission as a captain in the Continental Navy that's amazing so re retroactively he is finally recognized of course he's long dead by this time but uh he finally did get the recognition that he was due that he was legit and that he was doing all this on behalf of the american cause in the back of a picture frame that opens up so many questions in my mind <laughs> like what was it the picture in the frame who put it there probably things we'll never know yeah it was I don't, a wooden I don't know. frame <laughs> That's very interesting. Do we know, uh, you said he worked as a merchant for the rest of his life. Did he ever really settle anywhere in the United States? It sounds like you had said at the beginning he was mostly a, a sea merchant his whole uh, on a sea ship his whole life, but he spent time in Philadelphia where I assume he grew a dedication to the cause. Did he ever, you know, did he ever retire anywhere that you know of? Or 
Um, Philadelphia was his home. He died in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Um, Great. So, yeah, that's where, you know, when he wasn't at sea, he was in Philadelphia pretty much. Excellent. Well, uh, Michael, thank you so much for coming. Uh, please feel free to return with uh, any other fascinating story I don't know whenever you want. Anytime. It's been a pleasure. Well, uh, Founder fans, thank you so much for watching. A gigantic thank you to Michael Troy from the American Revolution Podcast for coming over and hanging out with us. There are uh, links in the description below to his website. You can listen to it wherever podcasts are available to your ears. Uh, I listen to it all the time doing dishes whenever I'm in the car. Uh, it's the only thing out there I would assume that's better than Founder of the Day. So big thank you again to Michael Troy for being our guest. Uh, and a big thank you for you to you for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. We'll be Tomorrow we're going to be talking about a, a woman pirate who gets hung in Massachusetts. So definitely like and subscribe and come back for that. And we'll be back with that other Founder for you tomorrow.